Welcome everyone, this is Brian Belay from Crowdwise. I'm very excited today because we're gonna be talking about something that I personally have been waiting a while to hear about, and that is the Republic Note. Now, this note isn't the reward note that many of you may be familiar with that's been on Republic the past few months. This is the profit sharing note. And what that means is that it's actually going to entitle the holders to share in the profits of companies that are successful who raised on Republic. So. A lot of questions that I've been getting over the past week or two, you know, since this was announced is, is the note a good investment? That's what we're going to go over today. This is not investment advice, right? Um, you know, make sure you do your own due diligence. Every investor is different, has unique situations and risk tolerances. But what I'm going to try to do is actually determine is 12 cents per note, which is going to be the offering price on July 16th, worth it? For investors. So we're going to be going over that. I'm going to jump into my model today um, and I'll be kind of just basically running through all the assumptions and everything that went into modeling the prices that I'm going to show. So we'll talk about what is the Republic note. Real high level overview though. Again, for investors, make sure you're actually going, read the white paper, look at the FAQs on Republic's website. We're going to talk about why valuation is important and then we're going to get into the Republic note valuation. So I'll talk about my assumptions um, and then I'll actually pull up the results in terms of the financial model so that you can go in and then actually download a copy for yourself if you want to tweak anything and see if you might decide to invest or not come July 16th or if it's after then if uh, you want to head over there and invest right now so that's kind of the crux of this question we're going to be trying to answer is is the Republic note a good investment Again, just the disclaimer, you know, this is not professional investment advice for informational purposes only, um, but hopefully this will help you make more educated decisions for yourself. All right, so what is the Republic note? This was basically, it's been around for a little while uh, in the form of reward of rewards note, where depending on how many investments you made or different types of bounties on the Republic platform, you would get some of these notes. Now, a couple weeks ago, they announced that July 16th, 2020 is going to be the official launch date for their profit sharing note. Now, what the profit sharing note really does at its crux and at the core is that it's going to entitle basically any of the holders of the note to be able to get some profit sharing rights for any companies on either the Republic public or their private crowdfunding platforms uh, who have a successful exit. So for example, let's say, you know, company A rose, uh, basically got funds on Republic. Uh, Republic gets their 2% stake of inequity for any companies that raise on their public platform. So let's say five years from now, that company went from say a $5 million valuation and now exiting at a $50 million valuation. So, you know, ignoring dilution, everything else, 10x return for investors, that's great. So what you would do is actually be because of that 2% equity stake, whatever they raised, well, just for easy math, say they raised a million dollars at the time, 2% of that would be 20,000. And then 20,000 times a 10x return five years later would be 200,000. Uh, so basically, you'd be getting shares of that $200,000 that Republic is getting when that company had an exit, whether that was an IPO or an M&A, merger and acquisition, that type of thing. So it's very interesting. Um, now, in addition, this, I mean, just for awareness, this is going to be offered for both accredited under uh, Reg D accredited investors, as well as they're trying to qualify with the SEC, a Reg A campaign that would allow non-accredited investors to invest. And then the security would be able to be freely traded. There wouldn't be any lockup periods. So on July 16th, uh, Reg D investors will be able to invest. Reg A investors, if you're non-accredited, so, you know, someone who makes that less than 1 million, uh, has less than a 1 million net worth, or makes less than 200000 a year for the past two years, you'll still be able to reserve your shares come July 16th. And if you're interested in the Republic note, you probably want to do that because uh, there is going to be a limited cap, right? They're only kind of offering so many to start, and then they're going to increase that as it goes on. Uh, we'll pull up the website shortly and kind of walk through everything. But just a reminder, again, the launch date is July 16th. If you're watching this after that date, you can head over there and learn more about uh, Republic's note. And the offering price is going to be 12 cents per note. So again, today, what we're really going to ask the question is, is 12 cents per note a good value, right? This could be the best thing in the world. It might be truly innovative, you know, it's, and you know, people are very excited about it, but you know, if it was $12 a note, would it be a good investment then? What if it was $100 a note? Or what if it was one cent? Um, we can't just invest in something that has an arbitrary value. We need to determine, you know, is it an actual good investment at the value it's being offered at? 
So how does the note work? Just again, high level, just to give you an overview. Uh, basically you have the private platform uh, and the public platform. So the private platform is accredited investor only, typically your institutional investors on Republic. And most people, uh, if you're an, a non-accredited investor, you normally would never be able to invest in these deals. Now, one of the very interesting things about Republic and what this note is gonna basically enable is that although these deals on the private platform would normally be off limits to non-accredited investors, the way that they've structured it, um, once you get, you know, it basically has 25% of the gains from the carry. So carry is basically carried interest and in the venture capital industry is, um, you know, if it's 10%, that basically means that they'll share in 10% of the profits when that exits based on what uh, the initial amount was. Um, and then 25% of that will go to Republic Core. And then those proceeds will be distributed to the Republic note holders. So essentially what this is doing is actually allowing non-accredited investors to benefit from some of these private accredited or institutional only deals. So it's very interesting. Now, in addition to that, there's the public platform side of the distributions as well, where Republic takes a 2% securities interest in all the companies that raise on the platform. Uh, so any of those, 100% of that is going to basically, uh, of those profits, will go to Republic Core. And then again, every $2 million or so, which is Republic's plan right now, um, they'll make a distribution to note holders. So, you know, a couple things you can just at a high level already start seeing. Um, the number of distributions is going to depend on how many companies are on these platforms, right? And how successful they are. So those are some of the key assumptions we're going to get into. In addition, it has to matter how many notes are out there, right? If there were, uh, say, just for the ease of math, you know, 100 notes out there, um, $2 million divided by those 100 notes, you get a much bigger chunk compared to if there's a million notes out there, $2 million distributed among those uh, million notes is going to be a lot smaller. So the actual number is going to be closer to $370 million at initial issuance. Uh, starting in July 16th, uh, and then the maximum cap that they'll ever be able to have in circulation of the Republic note is 800 million. So those numbers are also, you're going to see them in our calculations, but at a high level, again, can't recommend enough. You need to go and read the white paper over on Republic's uh, website for the note, uh, but this is a high level kind of how it works. So again, why we're doing this, and this goes back to one of my favorite quotes from Howard Marks, it's not what you buy that determines your results, it's what you pay for it. This goes for anything, public stocks, uh, bonds, real estate. Um, you know, it, it could be, you know, talking real estate, maybe it's a really junky house, but if you get it for $1, uh, you could actually turn that really junky house or junky investment into something good. On the flip side of things, it could be this massive mansion and it's amazing, uh, but if they're charging you, you know, just insane amounts of say 10 million or a billion dollars, doesn't matter how awesome that house is, it's probably not worth it. Uh, in the same way, we need to value our investments. So whether that's stocks or in this case, the Republic note, we need to decide is 12 cents a note an actual fair value. Uh, now, the second part of this quote is also interesting, right? Because this is one thing that we're not going to be taking into account in this analysis. But what he says is, and what you pay, the securities price and its relationship to the intrinsic value is determined by investor psychology and the resulting behavior. So that's kind of saying that there's two components to this note valuation uh, that we need to be aware of. One, are those distributions, which is just going to depend on, you know, the number of pub, uh, public and private companies on Republic's platform, how successful they are, how many notes are in circulation, uh, that type of thing. So that's basically you get a distribution based on that. We can make assumptions around those numbers. We can at least estimate that uh, with some amount of, you know, certainty or at least some degree of feeling confident. Now, the other side of the thing is this psychological, you know, fear of missing out and having this note token. Uh, are people, in terms of the supply and demand, you know, is it going to sell out really fast? Is it not going to sell as fast as they thought? So all those things, once this becomes a freely traded asset on some of these exchanges like Binance or other places, will determine the potential price. So while you pay 12 cents a note and that gives you your future dividends, the actual note itself could go up or down in value. It's going to be volatile. Um, and that is, you know, purely speculative. We're not going to be addressing that. Basically, most of these assumptions will just assume that you're investing in this and then holding it for long term to get the distributions and trying to calculate present value. But um, that is something else to be aware of, that there is going to be a fluctuation in that undervalue uh, the actual price of the note itself. 
Okay, um, we'll go over these quick assumptions, but really I wanna jump into the spreadsheet and we'll show you the results and we'll start kind of playing with the numbers so you can see, is it a good investment or not? Uh, some of the key assumptions just to be aware of. So we're doing a discounted cash flow analysis for a 15 year potential note returns. That basically means we did some modeling over 15 years in terms of the number of companies and certain growth rates and how successful they would be. And then based on that, um, we estimated the payouts in each year based on that 2 million threshold, right? That would go to note holders. Uh, but the thing you need to take into account is that if I have $1,000 today, uh, that's worth more than $1,000 15 years from now, right? Because there's opportunity costs. I could have invested that in stocks or bonds or gotten a return on that in other places. So what a discounted cash flow or DCF analysis does is it takes those future cash flows and it uses a discount rate to give us the present value today. So that would say, you know, $1,000 today, again, is worth more than $1,000 15 years from now. So it's going to take all the sum of all those strings of cash flows based on note distributions and then basically bring it to a present day value. And that will tell us what do we think is the present day value of the future cash flows of the note. Uh, note number two, as we mentioned, it doesn't take into account basically investor psychology, supply and demand, fear of missing out, all those things. Uh, so we're not going to look at price appreciation, depreciation of the note itself. That's purely speculative. You know, I'm not going to be getting into that. Uh, number three, we are doing basically three different scenarios. We're looking at an optimistic, a typical, and a pessimistic case. Uh, we'll show you all the assumptions for that. You're welcome to also then head over to crowdwise.org slash note, uh, create your free account or log in, and then you can download the spreadsheet, play with any of the numbers that you want so that you can put your own assumptions into the model. And then lastly, uh, but not least, you know, we're basically going to be using familiar early stage angel investing and venture capital data. Uh, you know, a lot of this stuff has like median or mean returns around, say, 25% IRR. And in terms of failure rates, that type of thing. So that's going to be all baked into the assumptions. Um, again, there's some risks that the crowdfunding companies on Republic, whether it's the public or the private arm of Republic, may not match up to those, may not live up to, you know, past eight angel investing or venture capital data. Um, so this, again, you know, comes with a disclaimer that past performance is no guarantee of future returns, uh, but it at least gives us kind of a feel if we're in the ballpark. All right, here's what everyone's been waiting for, right? Republic note token, here's the valuation kind of results um, with what I thought, you know, personally were some of the reasonable assumptions of a starting place, but we'll go in and we can tweak some of the numbers and see how it changes. So we have three different buckets here. We have optimistic, which is basically looking at what are kind of the most rosy pictures in terms of today, the assumptions that we make of what we might expect. Uh, we have typical, which again is more like typical type returns and growth rates, and then pessimistic. Now, in addition to that, uh, I broke it down into three different buckets. Yellow is basically the five-year return bucket. So the first five years of the note, what would be the distributions of those uh, cash flows that you would expect to see versus red is 10-year versus blue is 15-year. So you can see, even in the most optimistic case, actually, the five-year returns of the note are probably going to be very, very low. So this is per note. Um, so you could see two cents per note, and if you're paying 12 cents per note, right, it's a pretty small return. Uh, over the first five years. And the reason for that is that companies, whether they're early stage, you know, kind of startups and these types of companies in this asset class, take five plus years, sometimes, you know, nine or 10 years for the biggest ones to have an exit, which is that liquidity event where they might either get acquired or uh, have an IPO, but where inv investors get their money back. So because of that, uh, we use basically a five-year assumption for an average exit time of five years. So you can see that where it doesn't matter which case you look at, you're not going to get a lot in the first five years. Now, 10 years, if you look at the red, starts to get a little more optimistic. Uh, you can see in the typical case, you'll get about six cents perhaps per note over the first 10 years of investment. Now, this is the present day value. So that could be, you know, a little bit more. We used a discount rate of 10% here. But basically that's saying that the future value of all those cash flows, if you discounted it today, would be worth about six cents today. That's not bad, right? So you're having a note that you're paying 12 cents per note for, and you'll basically get six cents per, uh, per note back over 10 years. However, when you think about it, you know, that's 50%, but then when you look at it over 10 years, the IRR is actually not that high. It's maybe one or 2%. Um, now the optimistic case is actually much better. So here we're seeing a potential payout of 18 cents per note over the first 10 years. So you're actually getting 1.5x value of the note back. Um, so it would not only pay itself back, but give you a 50% profit for every note that you had potentially over those first 10 years. And then 15 years is even obviously better. And a lot of this has to do right with the rate of growth of companies on Republic's platform. 
Obviously, it depends on the number of companies that are on the platform. The more that they have, the more of those can potentially have an exit and give into that kind of $2 million threshold to pay out. So you can see, again, pessimistic case is pretty much one cent all around. Um, we'll show you, you know, those are very low growth assumptions, very low exit assumptions, all of that. Typical case, actually after 15 years, again, showing a positive return for the note, uh, for each note where you'll get more than the value that you paid. But again, 15 years, right? So you got to think about that in terms of your investment time frame. And what's very interesting is optimistic. I mean, this is definitely much higher growth rates. We assumed a 25% IRR for the portfolio of companies and that Republic would be adding new companies at a growth rate of about 30% to 35% per year, uh, depending on you know whether it's the public or private platform. Based on that, you know, Potential projections of the future value of those cash flows could be up to 83 cents. And depending how you tweak it, it could be even higher than that. So, you know, this chart is obviously not set in stone. There's a lot of assumptions that go into this. We're going to pull up the spreadsheet and take a look at it. Uh, but it starts to at least give you a bound of what you might expect if you decide to invest. Now, remember that let's say you decide to invest $1,000 in the Republic note. These are only the potential dividend distributions. So there is still a non-zero chance that your $1,000 investment in the note could actually go to zero. So if Republic went bankrupt and you know, hopefully this doesn't happen, I don't hope it happens, it doesn't look like, and I don't think people would let that happen anytime soon, but anything's possible. They're still a startup themselves. So you have to keep that risk in mind that if Republic went bankrupt, if the companies aren't as successful um, or don't have exits, or maybe they change their business model and decide to move away from this. Again, probably not likely, but it is possible your notes could become worthless. So your $1,000 investment, in addition to not getting any of these payouts, if that happened, um, could go to zero itself because then there would be no value for any of the note, of the note token holders. So keep that in mind. Um, there's that risk. But again, you know, I am overall optimistic about the industry and about Republic and what they're doing. And I think this is a great you know, step in the right direction, but something to keep in mind in terms of the risks. All right, so you know, bottom line or question that everyone wants to know, is the note a good investment after seeing all of this? There's no right answer, right? It depends on the investor. Every investor has their own different goals, risk tolerances, outlook. Um, do you think Republic and the equity crowdfunding industry are going to continue to be successful? Um, maybe there's a huge uptick, but maybe it could also, you know, if something happened with the regulations and the SEC decided to change things for whatever reason, you know, it could be bad for the industry um, and it could take a downturn. So some other considerations to just think of, as we mentioned here, supply and demand, right? What do you think this investor's supply and demand is going to be? Because that could drive the underlying you know, value of the note itself. Um, think about Republic's future core businesses, though, as well. This is a potential upside because today they do not include some of their businesses like Fig, which is their gaming platform, or Compound, which is their real estate platform. Today, those aren't feeding into, in that diagram, they're not feeding into Republic core, but they mention in the white paper that they could add those businesses in the future. Um, no promises, but again, all of that would basically just be extra gravy uh, from what the analysis already shows. As I mentioned again, the risks, you need to think about both, you know, the risks that uh, whether the companies perform as well as expected, because then you wouldn't get paid out as much, but also the risk to Republic itself. If public, Republic ceased to exist, went bankrupt, um, you know, the note would basically go away. And so it'd pretty much be worthless. Um, in addition, though, there's other kind of non-tangible, non-financial benefits that could potentially kind of boost this, uh, the underlying value of the note as well. And some of that is like the community benefits. So note holders are given, you know, waitlist priority, swag packs, other things like that from Republic on their platform uh, when you're investing. So, you know, there may be, it may be that people see some value in that. And because of that, there's more demand for the note token. So there's some of these like non-financial, non-tangibles that you also need to take into account. Okay, we're going to dive into the spreadsheet now, but uh, real quick, how to learn more. If you want to learn more, head over to republic.co slash note. We're going to head there right now and check it out. Um, also, you are free to download my note modeling spreadsheet for yourself. You'll have all these numbers in the background. You can tweak anything you want. Look at the assumptions. Head to crowdwise.org slash note. You just need to create a quick account, um, or if you already have one, log in, and then the download link will appear on that page for you. You can download a copy of the spreadsheet that we're going to show now. Okay, so first we'll jump over to the note page for Republic. Again, it's going live July 16th. So if you're seeing this after July 16th, you can head here right now and either invest as a Reg D investor or reserve your shares as a Reg A non-accredited investor. Um, again, there is gonna be a cap of, you know, in terms of what's offered and then the price per note is 12 cents per note. 
Now, just keep in mind, um, notes were offered basically back in 2018 at around six cents per note to some investors who had the option to convert at that price, as well as last year at around 10 cents per note. Now, those people were obviously much earlier, so you know the price of the note has appreciated a little since then, since it's actually happening now. Um, but it's good to know, you know, there were past investors who invested at cheaper valuations, so that's why we need to really look at this and say, does it make sense investing at this valuation today? A lot of information on this page. I'm not gonna go through all of it. Um, some of the key things that you should be aware of though. So if you search for the white paper further down about three quarters of the way on the page, you can download the white paper. This is a you know 49 page document, but again, highly, highly recommend you read it. It talks about everything from you know the Algorand blockchain that it's gonna be hosted on to you know the tokenomics, how it works, security, governance, all the different things that you would wanna be interested in in an investment. So make sure you read through this, uh, it's definitely helpful. In addition, there's an FAQ page where they'll go over high level questions uh, of FAQs about the note for accredited, for non-accredited investors, how it works. Uh, make sure you read through this because it will probably answer a lot of your questions right off the bat. Um, but in addition, you know, it's just a very good page and then make sure that you pre-register. So if this is prior to July 16th for you, you'll get a notification when they basically go live so that you can go in and reserve your shares. Um, and that's pretty much it for the page. So let's jump into the valuation spreadsheet and I'll walk you through it so you can just get a high level overview. I'm not gonna go into super extreme detail. Um, we'll make sure that you just get a basic understanding though. So if you wanna play with any of these numbers, you can do it yourself. So on this valuation summary spreadsheet right here, uh, you can see the three cases. Basically you have optimistic, typical, and pessimistic, and we'll show what each of those mean. Uh, but the two numbers that you can change in this sheet that will update everything are the total number of notes in circulation and the discount rate. So again, this discount rate of 10% is something that I'm using to basically just say that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar a year from now or 10 years from now. Um, so that's the rate that it's using to discount it. And the number of notes in circulation, this is the most conservative, meaning you'll have the lowest estimates based on the maximum. But you know, if we change this to 400 million, which will be approximately the number that are in circulation on the day of launch, um, then basically you can see most of the numbers here doubled because you essentially get twice the payout per note. Um, whereas when there's 800 million, it's half the payout. If you're splitting that $2 million among you know 800 versus 400 million notes, you can see how you get more per note depending on how many are in circulation. Um, so again, we wanted to be conservative and kind of look at the long-term future state, which is why we'll do 800 million. Uh, and that brings and basically updates these numbers that you see here. But a lot of the other assumptions we mentioned over here, so we look at the five, the 10 and the 15 year buckets, as we mentioned the in the yellow, the red and the blue. It shows you that most of the cash flows of this are going to be in the later years, you know, 10 through 15. And again, that's very dependent on Republic and how many companies they have on their platform. Uh, but you can see the IRRs that we assumed for both the optimistic, typical and pessimistic. Basically, for public companies, we assume 25, 15 and 5 percent IRRs. 15%, uh, you know, is even kind of low for angel investing, 25% is closer to the median. So you may even want to up that, but I want to be a little bit conservative in my numbers. And then the private company IRRs, you know, I moved the uh, upper bound a little bit lower to 20% IRR for the optimistic case, because those probably tend to be a little bit later stage companies. So there may be a little bit less, um, less growth still available on the table. Uh, but because of that, they're also a little bit more mature. So I assume maybe, you know, a somewhat fewer will fail. Uh, so because of that, I put a 10% on the pessimistic lower bound for private companies. Um, but again, this doesn't take into account supply and demand, ignores price appreciation. Um, we did include the impact of fees and taxes. Um, so in, I think both the optimistic and typical cases assumed it would be qualified dividends, I believe, and then pessimistic would be like ordinary income. So depending how it's treated tax wise, you know, you might either be in a lower or higher tax bracket. Uh, but surprisingly, it wasn't super sensitive to fees. So, you know, if we go to one of these things and optimistic, I assume 1% of each $2 million would be taken by Republican fees just for legal and logistic and other stuff. Hopefully that'll go down over time. Typical at 2% fees, pessimistic at five. Overall, again, you know, there's a whole lot of numbers you can tweak here. Basically, um, you know, I have two sheets for the private and the public. So the private basically starts with the number of private companies in portfolio in Republic's portfolio today, which is 29. And then in the public one, there's uh, 124. As of today, I think it's actually 133. So you can get that if you go to republic.co slash companies slash portfolio. And basically it shows all the companies that they have in their portfolios, both for private raises here. 
uh, and public raises. So we use this data in order to get the averages that we assumed. Um, you know, in terms of the average raise for public versus the average raise is much higher for private. Uh, and then from that we did, you know, we apply the 6% carry, whereas in the public side we do the 2% security stake. And then we get the total kind of portfolio stake based on that the exit timeline, the IRRs. Um, so the ones in green here are things that you'll probably want to you know, look at and you can change and see how it affects the results. So you know, if we bump this up to a 30% IRR for the optimistic case, it bumps up that per company exit value. So if you go back here, you know, it went from I think it was 82 cents before to 88 cents now for the optimistic case. Um, I think you know that maybe that went up a cent if I remember what it was. So things like that you can tweak. Um, the other main thing that will have the biggest impact is the growth rate of companies on Republic's platform. So, you know, today, again, if they have, say, about 130 companies in their public platform, how fast do you think they're going to be adding companies? And that depends on kind of the system that they put in place, uh, you know, how many people they have to help onboard those companies, as well as what the demand is from the industry. Um, and not only industry-wide, right, but they have to be going to the Republic platform. So this is something that is very much a, a kind of a blue sky assumption, make it whatever you want, right? Uh, play around with it, see if it affect, how it affects it. So if we bump that down to a 30% growth rate, um, actually didn't change it a whole lot, 81 cents. I think it was 82 before at the baseline of 35 for the public. Um, but if we made the optimistic case a 20% growth rate, um, actually 78 cents. So it's not impacting it a whole lot, but those are some of the key drivers. So those are the numbers that you'll probably wanna tweak and play around with and see how it impacts it. Now, in addition to this, let me just put all these numbers back to where they were. Um, you can go into the cash flow pages. So this basically shows you kind of at year one all the way through year 15, um, the number of companies. This is all determined by that growth rate that you did on the other page, number of new companies per year, exited companies. Um, and you can see I just did a little bit of funky because we have so many companies today on the platform that may have come in over the past, say, three years in Republic. Um, I started spreading those exits out over the first three years from year three to five. Uh, but after that, it basically assumes that any new companies uh, in this year would have an exit five years later, which is the average exit time. So that's why you see 43 new companies in year one, 43 companies exited in year six. Um, and then we look at it basically applies, you know, all the different IRRs and everything else. And it does those cash flows, it gets the present value. Um, so again, you can see $0, a lot of those early years, this is even the optimistic case, right? Um, most of the cash flows depend on a higher number of companies, and that's not happening until those later years. Um, in addition, it's also interesting, right? You can kind of break it down between the public and private platforms. I did find it was pretty interesting that I was thinking, you know, the 25% of the private wouldn't be that much, but I wasn't taking into account the fact that the average raises are they're very scattered, but uh, the average raise, it could potentially be a lot higher. Um, so basically, you know, I think the average raise today is 3 million. If you look at the portfolio company and you can see the highest is 35 million, but it goes all the way down to 80,000. So it's a very wide range, but uh, because of that and because of the way the carry may change, you know, from 1% to I think 16%, we assume 6% average carry, um, kind of a standard, you know, number to assume. That's how we came up with the numbers. Um, so that also you'll notice on the front page is you can see the breakout between the present value of the public versus the private. Um, so actually in most cases, the private value is assumed to be driving most of the returns of the note. Um, it'll be interesting to see if that holds up or not. The last thing we also did break or include uh, and break down is the public platform IRR versus private IRR because, okay, it's great, you know, over 15 years, I get 22 cents or 61 cents per 12 cent note, but what's that work out to in terms of an IRR, right? Um, so that works out to basically, you know, almost a 2% and a 4% IRR for the optimistic case, half a percent to 1% for the typical, uh, and 0.1 and 0.2% for the pessimistic. But again, that is only based on the cash flows. That does not include anything in terms of the value of the note. So, if on day one of being listed on Binance, the Republic note goes from 12 cents a note that it was offered at to 24 cents, you've just made 100% already. Um, not saying that could happen, it could just as easily go the other direction and plummet to six cents or less and you lose half or more. Um, now that wouldn't change the potential value of your distributions because you'll still hold the same number of notes, but that would change if you invested that initial $1,000, you wouldn't be able to sell your note at 12 cents a note and get the $1,000 back. Um, you would either get more or less. So that we did not take into account. That's you know purely speculative, anyone's bet. 
what do I think is going to happen? And again, this is my opinion. This is not investment advice. Um, I think because of the fact that, you know, there's not going to be a lot of payouts. It really depends in the early years. It really depends on the number of companies. I think that there may be an initial uptick due to interest and, you know, what they're doing. And I think it's a fantastic idea and like they're really pioneering in the space and in the industry um, to be able to create something like this. But after that initial uptick in interest, you know, people are going to have to hold it for 10 years, 15 years before you start seeing payouts um, and it gets paid out in a stable coin. You know, it, it may be kind of a deterrent for some people. So it's kind of anyone's guess what will happen in the near term, long term potential. And again, you know, if if you know me, uh, I'm in this for the long term. I probably will allocate, you know, a small amount that I would like allocate towards, say, investing in a startup to invest in this note, uh, because it's a very interesting idea. I want to see where it leads. I think it gives you kind of broad portfolio exposure to startups. Um, but again, you're going to have to hold it for probably 10, who knows, 15 years to get paid back. Maybe the note, the value itself could go up quicker than that. But uh, I think that, you know, the real probably I'm guessing price appreciation might not happen until some of those later years or until Republic starts showing that more of their companies, um, their growth rates, that they're having successful exits, and that gives people more confidence that they'll actually get something back from this investment. All right, I think I've been talking long enough already, so I'm going to wrap things up here. Again, head over to crowdwise.org slash note, and you can download this spreadsheet for yourself, play around with all the numbers in the spreadsheets. If you find errors, if you have feedback, let me know. I would love to improve this as we go. Um, some of these numbers may already be updated in the spreadsheet by the time that you watch this video, but I want to continue to improve the model, continue to basically watch this. I am very interested. Um, you know, I'm going to be heading over there on July 16th, but it'll be interesting to see where it goes from here. So thanks for tuning in. Hope this was helpful for anyone who's considering investing in the note. And as always, feel free to get more investor resources like this. Head over to crowdwise.org. We'll see you all next time.